Hey everyone, I'm Jeff Krebs from Ion Software and I thank you for joining us and Avid Technology for hosting this webinar. Ion Software develops a variety of visual effects products and today you'll be seeing two of them, Fusion and Connection. Fusion has a very long pedigree in film and its tool set is incredibly rich and complete. Ion Connection is the companion and conduit between Avid editing products and Fusion. It's an AVX2 plugin that allows for a direct round trip. Prior to solving effects challenges that you may see in your daily editing, it's important to show you how a node environment works and how nodes open up an entirely new freeform approach rather than being locked into layers. Nodes are sources, tools, and outputs connected on a logical flow chart. Tools or groups of tools can easily be duplicated, instanced, or branched in any direction. You still get a timeline for exact timing purposes and precise keyframe control and a rich spline view for controlling your animation curve. Your composites are simply merged through a series of nodes instead of confined layers. If layers act as the curtains, a fusion node environment turns those layers inside out and lets you easily and logically work behind the curtain. Let's begin in the Media Composer and start with a simple rostrum move, also known as a Ken Burns effect. This effect is all about speed, image quality, and deep control. By simply applying Ion Connection to an imported still or even a blank filler space and selecting how many layers I want to use, I've created a direct conduit to Fusion. We'll discuss the other buttons in Connection later, but for now, I just need a click Edit Effect and Fusion is launched and my photo is connected to Fusion. Notice the pink node. This is the saver and that's the direct link connected back to the Avid Timeline. The Fusion timing is identical to the Avid Timeline and the project setup matches perfectly to the Media Composer settings. Since my Media Composer is defined as a video resolution, I'll definitely want to use a higher resolution of the image. Fusion being a true resolution independent environment allows me to work with any size images or clips. This image is over 5500 pixels and I'll select the background tool. The background tool automatically matches the Avid project settings 1920 by 1080 and this is used as a template for setting the size of the output. By simply connecting the outputs together represented by the red squares I automatically create a merge which composites your clips together. Now let's control the motion. Let's start by animating the photo's size over time. When I hit the play button, you'll instantly see the results as you would expect to see them at full play speed at 23.98 frames per second. Let's animate the rotation and the position. Also notice, when I adjust the spline curve, I can continue making adjustments without stopping the player. This is the way you want to modify animation, where you can see the results as you make the adjustment. While rendering the rostrum move, I can switch back to the Media Composer, where you'll see the final results as they process. If my effect is still processing, I can continue editing and watch the render update simply by positioning my timeline bar over my clip. Now that it's complete, Here's the result. Okay, let's take this to the next level with connection. Let's say you want to create a roster move and apply it to multiple instances on your Avid timeline while individually focusing on different subjects as well as creating different speeds between the foreground and background. Here's how you do that. The first step is to apply connection to multiple locations where you want the results using a single shot. By clicking Edit Effect on all three instances of connection, you'll create three comps. Remember our pink savers? Well, let's copy and paste them into the first comp. To save a bit of time, I have pre-built this and will deconstruct this simple example. The first step is to replace the original imported Avid image with a real high resolution image. Second, Use Fusion's Vector Paint tool to create a clone brush and remove details from the background of the photo. With some simple masks, which we'll discuss in greater detail later, we have traced out the ion band members to separate them from the foreground. 
Now let's move into real 3D space by piping the image onto geometric shapes, in this case image planes. When we connect all our images into the 3D merge, we can now include the cameras, in this case three, and we'll shoot all three band members in our new 3D world. By viewing each animated camera individually, you can see how I've created three different camera moves which focus on each subject as well. Notice how the background moves at a different speed than the foreground based on the 3D transform position. Now for the results. While processing this comp, I'll switch back to the Media Composer. By clicking on the individual timeline locations, you'll notice that the results are different because each camera output was assigned to a new timeline position. And here's the results after the final render in Media Composer for guaranteed playback. A question we often get is how does Fusion's node environment handle tracked blurs on footage for reality and lifestyle programs? Take a look at this shot. First, let's connect it to Fusion. With this, we'll simply apply connection and transfer the media to Fusion. Again, Fusion understands all the Avid project details. Now this shot connected from Avid began as a 10-bit image. Notice Fusion will process this as a full 16-bit float image. In its simplest method, we can accurately track the logo with Fusion's infinite trackers. Notice I can track in any direction, including the ability to offset track. A unique approach to blurring is to stabilize the shot prior to applying the blur in a mask. Stabilizing is simply applied after a track with a simple single click. I'll create a quick polygon mask, which will be used to extract the region for the blur. Using one of Fusion's numerous blur tools, I simply connect the shape of the mask to the effect mask input on the blur, denoted by a blue triangle. Almost every effect in Fusion has an effect mask, and some tools have additional mask inputs. Plugging in the mask allows me to define the region of any effect, and of course, the mask can be animated. By applying a transform after the blur, I can now destabilize the shot and put in all the original camera motion. This is done through a Fusion script, and scripts can be applied to any tool. This is a completely unique approach to the task of blurring logos. So here's our result. Everything we've discussed so far has been based on the creation of an effect or process required in editorial. Yet, in editorial, the ability to quickly compare and have access to the results of your effects, whether creative or process-based, on your timeline is just as important. It's always about choice. Similar to a multi-camera edit, a multi-effects edit works through ION Connection. In this example, using the standard AVID tutorial material, we have a shot where we enhanced the light and used some god rays and graded the background. If I want to create a new version, I can click on the New Version button in Connection. What this does is create a copy of the comp ready for modification. On this new version, perhaps I'll adjust the color grade in the opposite direction, make the rays of light less intense. A simple process of the effect which can be done directly in Fusion or on the Media Composer and I can see the results on the Media Composer timeline. Here's how the version slider works. If I want to see the original version I can use the version slider and choose an earlier result. Actually this specific shot had four results and I can choose any version at any time and play it back in conjunction with the previous shot and the next shot. The examples that I've shown you are quite simple and are typical workflows for a great start in Fusion and Connection. The next examples cover a more creative use of Fusion by generating a lower third title ID. First, let me play the result. I, I try to do scripts that I'd like to see. If it's a movie I'd like to go watch, that's a big thing. Um, 
It's interesting to note that you can completely modify many aspects of this title without having to work deep within the actual effect comp. Let's jump to the end result first. Here's the title that you saw on the Media Composer timeline. What you're seeing is a macroed version of the title. What this means is that I've combined the most important parts that I felt I may want to modify and created unique controls. This allows you to change the main aspects at any time through a simpler interface. Everything you do in Fusion can be handled by a macro. For instance, all the content on the title, including the main line names and subtitles, can easily be changed in a macro interface. The macro is completely user definable, so in this example, I expose the color, whether the bar bends or not, the fade and distance controls, and even controls over the particles embedded within the title bar can easily be controlled through a user defined interface. You design the tool and are never forced into presets if you choose not to be. First, it's important to know when you work on something complex, you can work in small groups to get the results and then put everything together to get the overall result. The node environment makes it real easy to follow along and just as important to figure out what you did when revising your effect days or even months later. Let's begin on our main background. For this, we used a day sky tool, which is a cool generator for generating sky images. Beyond that, we simply color correct it to our liking. The question always arises, how do I create organic shapes for motion graphics? Well, that's where preset modifiers come to play. Every tool and every slider has modifiers. These vary depending on the tools. For instance, this mask has a perturbed sine wave modifier, allowing a mask shape to auto animate with the sine wave. It looks like this. If we add more image processing and duplicate it a couple times, you get a great looking result, like this. Take a look at this rotating cube with the words ion and fusion. Follow along the nodes and take notice of the green lines joining each of the nodes. This type of link is called an instance. The power of an instance is that it is the master and the slave nodes follow along for the ride. When changes are made, Next, take a look at this particle section. Particles are the types of creators that editors could probably use in every scene if they had it their way. Whether you're creating a lit dust environment, flames, or even water streams or explosions, particles are fast and interactive. In this example, it's used more as a design enhancement. In this 3D particle flow with the title bar, we can easily change the turbulent force and see the results as we move the slider. Now we add some image processing and in this case a subtle glow. As always it's completely up to you on how you want to process any of the images. The tools are there, you just have to make the choices. And now through a series of merges we could finally add all this beauty to a mask shape. After that process let's use a variety of additional color correction to add a top and bottom difference to enhance the top part of the bar line with an animated glow. Finally, let's merge in our rotating cube. Possibly a little overkill, but what the heck. Now we get to the text lines, where you can easily change the content. Stay tuned as we discuss the content of a title. Finally, notice the 3D deformation. You can apply this to an entire title bar. So that's it. Yes, a complex title, but that is the limitless ability of working with procedural nodes. You just have to follow the chain and figure out the construction. So now we're ready to render the title, but wait, there's 50 title names that need to be created. Well, I did mention Fusion's completely scriptable. This includes Python and Lua scripting languages. So here's how you create numerous titles from a single data source. In this quick example, we can trigger a script that will look at either a CSV file or an online database. The unique data is then merged into an existing effect style and the text is placed into specific text tools in Fusion. This script automatically triggers the Render Queue Manager, and at this point, we can start the process. This solves a problem that typically plagues editors of incorrect spelling and time-consuming manual text entry. Another challenge to editors is the ability to deal with multi-layer effects and keying technologies. As you've already seen, Connection can be applied to clips, but it can also be applied to transitions and layers. Applying connection to the topmost layer and specifying the layer count is all that's required. Connection then creates a default comp in Fusion, connecting layers through merges, 
and transitions through dissolves, and as an editor, you can take it from there. To expand on this example for Keen, we can subdivide the layers into sections. Section 1, with its color grading, blurs, and particle systems. Section 2, with its masks and particle systems. You'll notice the speed in which we've been able to play back through this entire presentation. You are witnessing the speed of the GPU. Yes, Fusion is completely multi-threaded throughout the entire application and takes full advantage of the GPU. The more you have, the more will take. And back to section 3, our blue screen. Fusion has numerous advanced keying technologies as well. The complete Primat 5 keyer is included. So in this case, we can now merge the entire comp together and quickly process the results. Of course, directly connecting back to the AVID timeline. Finally, I'd like to end our section of the webinar on the composite that we began with, the street scene. This visually dynamic sequence actually begins with a still photograph. For many of you, this may represent some really great ideas for show openings and bumpers using the following techniques. So, how was it done? Well, here's the photograph that started it all. First thing you'll notice is that we branch from the photograph in two different directions. One direction takes us into a day for night node, which is a combination of masks and color grading. Basically, you're defining the look of the street. You can continue modifying the look with image tools and shaders. Fusion has numerous shaders and combined together they create a powerful 3D tool set. The other direction takes you into 3D by simply plugging into the camera where you're projecting onto an image plane. By combining everything together we apply the look to our 3D image plane. Piping into a 3D displacement node you can instantly create depth. This is driven by a depth map. The future of editorial based effects is all based on depth. Simply described, you can compare the image look to an alpha channel except that black represents the distance and white represents the near plane. And of course shades of grey represent the depth. If you're not using depth tools for your effects, you're definitely missing out on a major part of the creative process for editorial effects. To continue, now that we created this 3D world, it's time to add camera motion, lighting, and other elements. By viewing the 3D scene, we can see the camera as it travels. We can stand behind the camera and, of course, animate all the lights as well. It's like designing your own personal video game. We also want to add elements into the scene. Remember those water spouts? Let me show you how easy it is to create them. Using a particle emitter combined with directional forces and a bit of turbulence, we can quickly create motion of a water spout. Interactive as always, you can adjust the sliders in real time to get just the right feel. The real secret to the look is the image processing after the particles. By adding glow and some displacement, you get that final look. This is a great technique for numerous particle simulations. As mentioned earlier, particles can exist in 2D and 3D. For the rain, we use line particles emitted from a cube which effectively rained on our 3D set. Check it out from all the angles. Finally, now it's time to put everything together in our final merge. What you're seeing is the speed of the processing. At as little as two frames per second on a three-year-old laptop, the results speak volumes. With this amount of time, we were only able to show you a tiny fraction of the capabilities of fusion and connection combined with Media Composer or Symphony. Here's an example of a couple of techniques that we hope you find interesting. Paired up with Avid editing products, Fusion really does help take your editing environment to the next level with both creative tools and finishing processes. As always, you can try Fusion and Connection on your Avid with either the Learning Edition or simply request an evaluation license. Again, a big thank you to Avid and you can connect with us at ionline.com.